What's up everyone, China Cycling here. Straight off the bat, I just want to say I don't condone irresponsible riding, but you also have to understand that different countries have different levels of respect for traffic signals, and I tend to use a bit of a when in Rome attitude to riding in China. Imagine for a second you joined a race in China and you saw a red light and no one was slowing down. Would you pull over to the side of the road as everyone else runs a red light? If you would, then mad respect to you, but I just went with the flow. That being said, I thought it would be cool to show you the kind of grassroots racing that's happening in China. Big bike races have existed in China for a long time. They're seen as a way for local governments to show off their city. As a foreign rider, you get invited to lots of these races, all expenses paid, and I've taken a part in some before. But I'm not that strong of a rider, and the other riders are usually basically pros who do nothing but ride their bike and use it as their way to make a living. And as a result, I can't really compete and I'm just pack filler. This time, I thought I'd enter a more local race to be at my rider's level and to show you guys how these local races go down. So most of these smaller races are put on by local bike shops. In this case, it was a K-Point race organized by the local Trek shop. They also have their own team that tries to dominate these races too. We have a few expat riders and a few local riders who banded together to make the Shanxi Hills International team. We don't take ourselves very seriously and just enjoy slapping on a number and racing. In this race, there was me and Marcus from Team Shit, five guys from the Trek team, and then about 20 or so individual riders. Registration is about 10 US dollars and includes the insurance. The races take place every two weeks and alternate between a 36 kilometer climb and a 55 kilometer flat route. This time was the 55k flat route not my speciality so i'd be working to try get the win for marcus tactics are few and far between in these races usually the stronger riders just hide in the pack for the majority of the race and then the last 1km is just a crazy bunch sprint if there's a breakaway the riders will never work together and the breakaway ends up being swallowed by the peloton so the plan was I would do some attacking to keep the pace high and chase down any breakaways made by the Trek team. Then try give Marcus a chance to counterattack after I get caught by the peloton some part in the second half of the race. So race day we rode about 20 kilometers to the start of the race and signed on. Then the Trek boys rolled up in their team car, a bunch of people showed up super last minute so I guess that's the same the world over. There was a bit of a briefing telling everyone to respect the rules of the road. This was met with laughter by the group. And then we rolled out for the start. You know, mad respect to the race organizers. They have a few cars and motorbikes who try to ride along the road and keep the general traffic away from the racers. The motorbikes scout ahead and will pull over to mark any hazards and stuff. But they're not the police, so they can't just block off an intersection or anything. Uh, most races in China start with a mad sprint near the start to try shake out all the amateurs. There's usually a mix of pros and complete novices who may be doing their first race. So I think these sprints are a way of making the race safer for the more experienced riders. To be honest, these fast starts usually scare the crap out of me. As a light skinny climber with good 20 minute power but poor 1 minute power, I'm always scared I'll get dropped in the fast start. So 
despite supposed to be helping Marcus in this race, I asked him to give me his wheel for the anticipated fast beginning. He's about 20 centimeter taller than me and taller than the other Chinese riders, and his rear wheel is usually highly sought after in these races. There was a bit of an energetic start, but nothing like the 60k an hour start that the higher level Chinese races usually start with. No sprint today. I pulled up alongside Marcus to ask when the sprint usually happens, and he told me that was the sprint. So feeling confident now, I thought I'd do a fake attack. I went for it and I attacked and one of the Trek guys covered my move. One extra advantage of attacking off the front is you get some pretty sick photos from the camera car. And also they don't try to nickel and dime, they try to make you pay for photos, they just throw them all into a group chat after the race. You can see this guy trying to convince Marcus to chase me and Marcus is like, nah, I'm, I'm good bro, I'm good. The plan was to string out the pack and try and make everyone burn a match, while Marcus just maintained his pace and wheel surfed, saving energy. After being caught, I dropped the speed, allowing Marcus to catch back up, fairly confident that nobody would counterattack. We also figured people would just give up chasing our attacks if every time one of us attacked, we just got brought back. Meaning in the second half of the race, we could attack without being chased and actually go for the win. So yeah, when I was off the front, I put a bit of a dig in and then just brought the power down and let them catch up. But as they're catching up, boom, just this car throwing a U-turn there, trying not to get hit. And yeah, just jump back in the pack and uh, try to recover. Marcus was back on as well, so all back together. You can see one of the Trek guys does a bit of a dig as well. No one really wants to chase it. I've just finished my dig, so I don't really want to chase it either. And I'm confident someone else will chase it, and yeah, this guy comes through and goes for it. And I'm, I was hoping my guy in front of me is going to get to, on his wheel, but he kind of just lets it go. But looking behind us, there's still a huge group of people with us, and I'm fairly sure someone else is going to try to bridge across. So I'm pretty happy just sitting on this wheel and recovering from my dig. And then again we see the red light ahead, so it's a red light going straight and you can see these motorbikes coming across the crossing intersection. A bit mad, I check back to see Marcus has made it through, roll there, gets the adrenaline going a bit, but yeah, definitely got to stay safe. Not, a, not the cleverest thing to do, but again, there's a whole bunch of us and uh, yeah, there's no way I was just going to stop. And so there's still one guy up the road at this point. Uh, two guys up the road, sorry. And now this guy bridging across is going to make it three guys up the road. So I'm starting to get a bit nervous, and it makes it four guys up the road. And this guy in front of us, maybe he's just not quite got the legs to bridge it. So I'm having a bit of a chat with Marcus, seeing if he thinks that breakaway is going to stick or not, because he races with these guys all the time. And he thinks that breakaway is not going to stick. He, he says, there's no way the guys will work together in the breakaway, so just stay on the wheel and let's slowly let it come back. But the guy in front of us is a bit tired and I can see the group up the road isn't actually getting that far ahead of us, so fair enough, I'll do a, I'll do a turn on the front too. As I always say, I'm a skinny guy, my FTP is about 220, well it was at the time of this race, which is about 4 watts a kilo, 4.4 watts a kilo. So when I'm on the front, I just go just above my FTP. Another red light, again, it's just gone red, so slightly better, but yeah, we all make it through there. And the group up the road is slowly, slowly being brought back. We're all doing turns. Everyone on the front just basically rides at the threshold, which is enough to bring back that group, because in that group, no one wants to work at threshold. So now we're all back together. And again, the draft I get behind Marcus is pretty sweet, so if we're in a big group, group like this, I'll just take Marcus's wheel. I move up a bit just to 
cover anything because like I say if something does go it's supposed to be me covering it let Marcus rest and like I say my heart rate's down to about 160 something now so my threshold heart rate's 174 so this point I feel good this guy signals there's another red light and everyone kind of starts to, starts to slow down a bit nothing crazy everyone's looking left and right there's some traffic coming obviously but considering the size of the road it's actually a pretty quiet road but again this guy boom attacking through a red light like huh okay I was totally not expecting it and then yeah Marcus covers it everyone's still pretty fresh but pretty nice scenery like uh, if you look to the left you can see the mountains this race takes place at the bottom of a beautiful mountain range This guy in blue, also riding for himself, but a really strong guy. Again, I'd say the biggest difference between grassroots, grassroots racing here and grassroots racing in the West is uh, the lack of teams here. Like, there's basically only two teams represented at this race in a race of like 30, 40, 50 people. You see the camera car still. You can see my heart rate's gone up. There's a bit of an acceleration there. But yeah, the camera car's still going along, taking the pictures. And this blue guy's going again, like. He was a pretty punchy rider. <laughs> so this water on the road, so what they do in China, these water trucks go around spraying water on the road to try to keep the dust down. But uh, obviously for a bike race or for anyone riding a bike, it just gets you super dirty. You can see Marcus's GoPro has got covered in dirt from it. Mine's a bit smudgy too, but slightly better. But yeah, it makes drafting rather unpleasant too. That guy attacking off the front, he's actually from the same, uh, lives in the same city where I train, near to the city where the race is, and I know he's not a particularly strong rider, so I'm happy just to let him ride off. But on the left here, you can see there's a bit of a group starting to bridge up to it. So, and I'm sucking up my job right now. Like I'm supposed to be protecting Marcus, and Marcus is dragging us up the road. So I get the award for the worst domestic here. But again. One guy goes, trick guy goes, okay, so now I'm doing my job. I, I cover that. Anything with a trick guy in it, basically, I definitely have to cover. And uh, you'll keep noticing it's the same one trick guy who keeps attacking. Like, the four other trick guys are just sitting at the back doing nothing. Which is usually their go-to tactic. See some guy flying down on the right here. And again, they're all just private ears, like, no team. They just keep going. Going a bit of a downhill. And like I say, being a skinny guy, downhill suck for me, so I'm just trying to get a decent draft on the way down if I can. Speed's above 50k an hour, 55k an hour. No one's really smashing it, but just because of the downhill, gentle downhill, a couple of percent, keeps the speed up. And those two guys who went down the road, they've been brought back. Again, no one really wants to attack into the downhill just because you're wasting so much energy. Not sure why this Trek guy wants us all to go through, but I see one guy's off down the road and the one Trek guy near the front doesn't want to chase it, despite them having four or five guys. Another intersection, but no red light, so we all go through there. And now we're at the base of uh, the main climb of the of the race. It's not really a climb. You see the Garmin says like 3%, 4%, but uh, it definitely mixed it up a bit. So you see these two guys go off the front. And this is the view from Marx's camera. I'm a few wheels back. I'm following another guy. And I can't see what's going on up the road. Like... Uh, I've not done this race before, and Marcus told me about this hill. I don't know how long the hill is, I'm not sure how steep it is. So I'm trying just to 
go with the flow at the minute. Again, Marcus has got a bit of a gap back from this guy. So if I was good at my job, I'd be helping him bridge that gap. But I'm just sitting at the back here, la la la. And I get a view of what's going on and I say, oh, okay. So now I, I try to move up. So I can go give Marcus a hand. A bit of a crappy road surface at this point. Okay, I've bridged to the little group that has Marcus in it. Marcus is still on the front of this little group. But I've just put a, put a bit of a dig in trying to bridge across, so... I can't really help him pull it back right now. I need to recover for a bit. But Marcus, he's, he's, a, good, he's a good guy. He'll pull it back, no worries. I'm just, wheel, I'm just trying to get let my heart rate go back down a bit. And it was a really hot day as well. I don't, I didn't put the temperature up on the overhead dis display, but it was a high 30s, low 40s temperature. You see, this Trek guy does a bit of a dig, but doesn't really commit to it. Everyone's pretty tired to get towards the top of this hill. Like it's the ideal place to attack, but we went up at such a pace, no one really wants to do anything. That Trek guy was actually a different Trek guy. That was the climber on the team. He's not a bad climber. And again, this guy in the champion system skin suit, he does a pretty long pull. That climb definitely cut, cut the size of our group down. Our group got whittled down to about 10 guys, but of those 10 guys, like five of them are the Trek guys. So basically they're making up about half of our group. You can see there's two of them on the front now, they're trying to pull the group along a bit so people that got smashed by the climb can't get back on. Which is no fair play, good tactic. And uh, you know, if I, if I'm pretty, I'm noodling, but if I end up on the front, I'll just noodle at the front. Like, when half of the group is the Trek team, I don't really want to be doing all the work of pulling the group along. And then some guy goes off on the left there. And again, half of our group is Trek, and the Trek guys just don't chase it. And I'm looking at them going, well, I'm not chasing that. If you guys, if you guys want to chase it, I'll do my fair share of the work. But I'm not pulling you guys along to it. Okay, so I think the Trek guys realize that, and they start getting a bit together. Now, I'm happy to do turns if everyone's doing the, the same share of the work. But when, when one of the team just wants everyone else to pull them to the end, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put effort into that. But this guy was doing a decent dig. But again, like these tactics, that guy in green, you know, like the Trek guy was doing a decent pull, a decent dig. I mean, you know, he tries to come around the outside, and I think it's just burning matches, but. I see another one of the other Trek guy goes. Again, I re probably should have covered that, but this green guy, he seems to be on it, so I'll just take his wheel there. But you can see most of these guys are all are all pretty skinny actually. And this guy starts bridging across, so Marcus sees that as a good wheel to surf across. So Marcus takes that, and then everyone starts coming around. I'm like, hmm. I chose the wrong wheel with this green guy, so I move up a bit too. And again, this is a bit of a downhill. I see a sign there that says, like, gotta do a, a U turn in one kilometer. And then, about one kilometer later, just in the middle of the road, just throw a U turn. It's like, oh, okay. Again, Marcus has done these races before, so he knows what's up, but for me, there's no set point you have to do your turn around, so some people do it like 100 meters earlier, 100 meters later. And then this guy is trying to tell me, yeah, chase it, chase it, chase it. But uh, I could see that the two guys up the road were already pretty much setting it up, like they weren't dedicated to it. Like We could just work as a big blob and just slowly pull them back in, but for whatever reason, he was determined he wanted to chase it down with speed. So. And I think this guy is actually pretty friendly with the Trek guys, so 
maybe he was a uh, a de facto track team member. But anyway, he does a he does a, a dig and try to pull this one guy back. You can see Marcus's cam muddy camera going into the sun has been made pretty messy. So apologies for the footage. But so we catch this first guy. And there's still a guy out here at the road, so I'm on the front. And they're not going they're not going that fast, so I'll work to pulling it back. I don't want to go too far up the road, like Marcus comes through and we pull these two guys back. Okay, a bit later on now. Super noodling, as you can see the speed, the speeds. There's a fast forward through the noodling, 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 noodling. And again, no one wants to do anything. And then one of the Trek guys goes, and I'm like, oh, it's a Trek guy. I should probably chase that. Uh, so yeah, I put, I put the what's up. And again, Mr. Champion System. And we bring the, that Trek guy back. So, lots of like half-hearted attacks. And then this guy, that, this guy is decent tactics, you know, a counter-attack. And yeah, like, so this one guy a private ear just counterattacks, and all the Trek guys just go no. And I'm noodling on the front, but no one will go past me. Super noodling. I'm first wheel of this group. Marcus is the second wheel of this group. And I'm like, okay, now the Trek guy. Now, now a Trek guy goes for it. Just one of the Trek guys and a few of the other private ears. So all it like. Fair play to the Trek guys and their tactics. All the other Trek guys are just resting at the back. And this one Trek guy has realized the guy at the road is quite far up the road now. But he doesn't do much of a dig before saying, okay, someone else, someone else does some work. And again, like, we haven't even brought that guy back yet. And everyone stops really working together. So Trek guy does a bit of a half-hearted attack off the front. Everyone's trying to go around the potholes at the same time. And I'm doing pretty good at this point. I, my legs were feeling pretty fresh still. The heat was pretty bad. Like uh, it's difficult to see looking at the footage, but it was a it was a hot one. Trek guy's been brought back, but again, there's still one guy up the road. You can't really see him in the footage, but he is about 400, 500 meters up the road. And again, this is a descent, zero watts. And then boom, a Trek guy goes. And then another Trek guy goes. And then, okay, so now there's three Trek guys. So I'm like, okay, this is, <laughs> this is where they wake up. But again, as soon as they see everyone going with them, they just call it off. So yeah, I think at this point the Trek guys are trying to pull back the guy up the road. And uh, we start working together. Like I say, I've got nothing against working together with them. But then... This guy starts saying that we're not pulling hard enough on our poles. To which I said, yeah, well there's only two of us and five of you, so... Trek guy tries to do a dig, just cover it, and then you're just still pretty noodly. It was like half trying to noodle, but also everyone was aware of the one guy that was up the road. And we're just trying to keep him at the same distance. <laughs> you see everyone's freewheeling, taking it easy. So I start to have a chat with Marcus. 
and uh, telling him like basically when we pull back that guy I'll do a little fake counterattack and then when they catch me he should counterattack the counterattack so we've got our we've got our plan roughly set up and that's just a matter of waiting for the pack to catch that one guy who's, who's up the road Again, so we're trying to work together now. Champion system guy gives me the elbow. I'm more than happy to get on the front and do some work because we can see we're really bringing this guy back. And if we don't bring him back, we're not going to be able to do my plan of the uh, counter attack. So I'm happy to do some work. But again, it's just me and this one champion system guy. And the whole Trek team's just sitting on our wheels. So not great. So by the time I get here, I'm already above my threshold, like 180 beats per minute. And suddenly I realized, ah, yeah, I was supposed to counterattack. Well, I'm already a bit too toast, so. But fair play to that guy, he did a long, long, decent attack. He was off the front for about 15k's, 20k's. Okay, I'm already toast, but, you know, gotta try to do my counterattack. So I go, the one Trek guy goes with me, Marcus stays behind. Trying to wheel surf the guy who was in the break. But I'm still, I'm, my heart rate's 190, 192. I'm pretty, I was pretty cooked before it. But then, so this is the plan. When the group catches us, Marcus is supposed to just do another counter attack. So, boom. Marcus goes. And I try to stay on the front so no one can go around me. And uh, by the time everyone realizes what's going on, Marcus has got a bit of a gap, and he's just cruising. <laughs> One of the guys next to me told me to chase, <laughs> uh, to which I told him he should look what I, look at our jerseys, because uh, same team, dude. And again, so now this group trying to chase Marcus. You can see Marcus up the road. His lead's getting pretty decent. This one guy's like, okay, let's work together to chase. And I take second wheel. And a bit of a, bit of a, a not great move. Uh, I just let a huge gap open up. I don't block anyone. Like, hey, if the guy behind me wants to come around me, you come around me. And so the guy behind me comes around me, and the guy behind him there's a huge gap. So okay, I pick in behind his wheel too. And again, I just slowly let him ride off the front. And then the guy behind me realizes what's going on. So I'm just trying to. Like, they already don't want to work together. I'm just trying to <laughs> take away any other motivation they have to work together. Again, this is Marcus up at the front. You can see his heart rate, like, he's, he's going as, as fast as he can. He's got about uh, less than a kilometer to go. Maybe just, uh, maybe two kilometers to go. His battery actually ran out on his GoPro just before the end. And so yeah, this group's trying to chase Marcus down. I decided to pull up next to the guy who was leading the chase, the Trek guy, and just start trash talking him. And again, the same thing happens. This guy goes. I just let the gap open up. The guy behind me comes around. I get out of his way. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be too much of a bad guy, but just trying to give Marcus every chance he can to succeed. And again, this one Trek guy is trying to wave everyone through. And the four of the Trek guys are sitting at the back of the pack just doing nothing. So I just pull up alongside him again. Just do some more friendly trash talking to him. This, the one Trek guy who was at the front doing the line show of the work was actually a pretty friendly guy. And yeah, then, uh, then all the Trek guys decide, okay, it's almost the end, let's come through. So the Trek train comes, and that was dangerous. That, the, t the car for the race tried to move that other car out of the way. But in doing so, blocked us off. Okay, so now this is the chase now, like, last few hundred meters of the race. On the right, that guy in the blue is actually the winning move. So he goes for it, and I wanted to take his wheel, but I don't want to pull the whole pack up to Marcus, because Marcus is still up the road. So at this point, I'm in a bit of a conundrum. Like, do I, do I go for it and risk taking people who will do us up the line? Like, Marcus is up the road. You can see Marcus just went into the bike lane on the right. The finish line's about 100 meters away. And uh, it's... There's a whole bunch of people still behind me. And now this is basically the start of winding up for the final sprint. I'm pretty boxed in, not in a great place. I just tried to take a wheel. 
gets a bit dicey. You can see on the right there'll be a red flag for the end of the race. And boom, that's the end. So you can see Mark is on the far right there, he's in the bike lane. He looks to the left, goes, oh wait, you guys are here. The red flag in front, in front is the finish line. Uh, everyone lights it up. I realize Marcus isn't going to make it. I try to light it up, but my sprint is nothing. And yeah, me and Marcus roll home in 7th and 8th. So I got 7th place, Marcus got 8th. So, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Marcus almost made it. He said he uh, just ran out of gas at the end. But it was close. But yeah, really good fun. Uh, racing in China, totally different to racing in the West. Especially this grassroots level. Tactics are different, scenery is different, uh, you know, the safety is different. I think no matter where you are in the world, as long as it's relatively safe, slap on a number and go race. It's the best thing you can do. I don't actually do that much racing in China, so don't bring a lot of these videos. I've got a bunch of footage of lots of different races that I've never put up. If you're interested, if you like this kind of race, let me know and I'll do some more of it. But they get very long to watch. And if you're still watching now, congratulations on making it to the end. Any comments, let me know in the comments down below. You know the drill. Hit the subscribe button to subscribe. And I'll see you next time. China Cycling, out.